Let me tell you a secret. Car reviewers on YouTube and everywhere else are full of shit. You know how I know? I used to be one of them. I definitely think this is a really cool cat. Uh, definitely just excited. So this is one of those videos where you learn how to keep your house from being broken into from a professional burglar. That's me. But I have taken a different path and you can tell by the fact that I am no longer covering the automaker events mainly because they have banned me. That's right banned me from them because, unfortunately, my reviews were honest and they don't like that kind of uh, nonsense. Which brings me to the first type of a car review that you should not trust. There are a total of three, and we'll get to the other two in a second, but this one is the most common and popular one and yet by far the worst. Now, this is the type of a review that is done by an established automotive media from bigger channels like Motor Trend or Doug Dumura, all the way to smaller channels that are recognized by the car industry as micro influencers, like until very recently, myself. I thought it was just as beautiful as this one, and I also am really. Okay. And these are the reviews of cars that get posted right about when a new model is released or even before that. Now think about it. How does one get a hold of a brand new car that is not on the market or even in production yet to be able to review it? Well, you have to be invited to a media drive by the brand. If you do have a decent following on social media within the automotive niche, you should be able to get into most of the media drives or be able to get a car for a couple of days to play around with. Now, the media drives. Oh, the media drives. These can be amazeballs. That's an industry term. You get flown out like an Instagram model by an 80-year-old billionaire. Business class, best hotels, catered meals, entertainment, gifts, exotic destinations. It is awesome. I, I think some of the trips I went to, I would estimate the brand to spend an equivalent of about, I don't know, $50,000 just on my channel to be there. So before I get to the obvious problem here, uh, there is only so much you can find out about a car if you have it from an hour to even a couple of days. It is just not really enough time to truly review it. And most media drives are all done within a very controlled environment with pre-selected routes and almost never include charging, which is an important part of reviewing an electric car. Now, let's get to the elephant in the room, which you probably think is the fact that these brands tell the journalists and influencers what to show and what not to show. But that's not actually true. It's actually a little bit worse than that. So let me tell you something that I am one of the very few journalists and influencers who is even in a position to tell you this. I will tell you what it is why I am comfortable sharing this, but before that, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Electron. Look, one of the biggest challenges with owning an EV is finding convenient and reliable ways of charging it. And it's no secret that most EV drivers like to charge at home. That's why Electron built the powerful V-Box in-home charging station. It provides up to 48 amps of power for your J1772 EV. It adds up to to 46 miles of range per hour and fully charges your EV in under six hours. Simply plug in your car at night and wake up to a full charge in the morning. Get one today using the discount code in the description of this video. So what does happen at the media drives and private events for influencers and journalists? Of course, they tell you all the awesome things about the car, avoid as many questions as possible about any shortcomings, and then and leave you the hell alone to do whatever type of a review you want to do. No, really. Uh, you can say anything you want about the car while going to town on the free buffet and an open bar they have paid for. However, if they don't like what you end up saying, well, you're just not going to be invited back. And some of them are pretty blunt about it. 
Here's what Volkswagen told me after I asked them why I wasn't invited to a media drive. Now, this was after I criticized their ID Buzz after its unveiling. As you can see, they had no problem telling me that a negative take on their car is what got me banned from the future invites. And that's in addition to saying that I wasn't kissing their team's ass enough for inviting me. Now, don't get me wrong, you still do see some mild criticism in some of the reviews, but it's nowhere near where it should be because almost all of the professional reviewers rely on being on good terms with the brands to be able to continue doing their job and have access to the early cars. Here's a great example of one of the biggest electric car YouTube channels fully charged raving about the Honda E after an exclusive access to its pre-production car. <laughs> this is very exciting. This is a really, really interesting new electric car. It's, the, it's really, really remarkable. Coming out very, very soon. That is very nice. <laughs> First of all, very nice. You mean the Honda e-acceleration, one of the worst EV 0 to 60 specs in the industry with over eight seconds? And he knew it when he said it. As a matter of fact, anybody who knew anything about electric cars knew right away at that time that this was going to be one of the worst electric cars out there with only 111 EPA equivalent miles of range, which was half of what EVs coming to the market at that time were boosting, and yet with a huge $35,000 starting price for which you could get another EV with double of that range. This was such a huge disaster for Honda that they've only sold a few thousand of them in the first year and then even less than that in the following year. Now, did Fully Charge know all of this when they were making and releasing this video? I'm pretty sure they did, so why lie? Well, this is why. Guess who gets invited to another exclusive media drive event from Honda the next year? It's cute. It's retro, but it's built for the modern age. This is the Honda E, and it might just be one of the most desirable electric cars. No, one of the most desirable cars, full stop, on the market right now. Wow. Literally every single word that he said about that car was bullshit and he knew it. Because by then, they knew the pathetic specs for that car and even more pathetic sales, and yet... One of the most desirable cars, full stop, on the market right now. And as I was just about to film this video, and I kid you not, uh, Fully Charged just uploaded another exclusive preview of, well, you get the picture now, right? Now, let's talk about the other two types of the reviews real quick. The second one is any Tesla review. It is usually done by a Tesla fan or a Tesla investor, and you will pretty much never get the honest review. And the third one is from those who did not get their cars from the automakers, but are owners of the cars themselves. And in that case, it's kind of like asking if Johnny is a good kid, if you're asking King Johnny's parents. Apparently, he is. So, why am I telling you this? Well, when I was reporting on electric cars when they were just coming out, all news were good news because they were mainly prototypes and hopes and dreams and those are always amazing. But then those prototypes went into production and a lot of smaller startups went public where their priorities shifted from pleasing customers to pleasing investors and then there were a lot of issues to report. Most reporters have decided to keep their brand in coming and that's why you saw a lot of this. <laughs> this is very exciting. But I have decided to do something 
slightly different. It kind of looks like a Ford delivery van dressed up as a Volkswagen minibus for Halloween. So the bottom line is this. Instead of making a statement and creating an amazing electric vehicle as a returning legend, something that Ford did a pretty good job at with the Mustang Mach-E, Volkswagen has essentially put a minibus shell on top of the ID4 with very average specs that will be even more average and outdated by 2024 and called it a day. You weren't supposed to drag the ID buzz into the past, you were supposed to bring the past into the future. This is not how you compete with Tesla and other impressive competitors. Remember that email from Volkswagen essentially letting me know I was banned from their media events? This was the video they were talking about and I kid you not, it came out literally at the same time as I was having dinner with the Volkswagen team, including the and the Volkswagen of America CEO, Scott Keogh. Now, some of you may not know this, but Volkswagen used to be a sponsor of this channel for about a year, and a video like that and other videos of me criticizing the ID4 has lost me tens of thousands of dollars in more advertising income if I would just keep my mouth shut and say, I don't know, something like this. This is the new ID buzz, and it's the cure, my friend. Friends, the cure for the oversized yet somehow cramped, boring, samey, annoying SUV that have been clogging up our streets for too damn long. Another fine video from guess who? the fully charged. So next time you're watching a car video review, don't think about what the person in front of the camera is saying, but think about the nice fat catered dinner behind it. And they are delicious. I should know. And if you want to know what happened to my ID4 and why I did this on the Volkswagen's display during this year's CES, as Volkswagen has not only abandoned me as a customer, but pretty much every single ID4 owner, you can watch that video right here. Other than that, see you guys next time and remember to stay charged.